good. You know, maybe because we hadn't played in about a year and a half, it felt like it just so long ago that we played the Michigan game and um, guys have been uh, just fully immersed in studying with finals week. And so I think they're probably really anxious to play. We had a rough week. We really had a rough week. You know, whenever you have time between games, you hope to make a pretty good move in terms of improvement and, and having good practices, but between well, obviously we've got some some injuries and and illness, and uh, also then sometimes you can't get everybody to a practice because of finals. That always happens. So we we had short on numbers sometimes. So I was a little bit worried that we hadn't made the progress I had hoped. Sometimes it's hard to make progress finals week, but because of less numbers than usual. But having said all that, you know, gosh. Um, I was I was really pleased and surprised how well we played tonight, and I know we, you know, we had Nichols out man, but still, um, you know, this is a team that went to uh, New Mexico and had New Mexico down in the second half. So I've seen them play much much better than this, but for us, it's about how we play, and I thought we played for the most part a very very good game tonight. Yeah, always, always hoping for those. Takes a lot of the stress out of the coaches. I can tell you that for sure, which turns into a lot more stress before the game than during the game, which I like those a lot better. Um, but yeah, we, I was, you know, you don't know after a long break, are you going to be rusty and going to take you a while to get into your rhythm or, or are you just so excited to play that it's all going to go well? And um, Sterling kind of got us off to a good start. Sterling had been uh, gone yesterday to Chicago to a funeral, so he missed practice. Um, and I know he's got a little bit of a heavy heart. He got back late last night, and, um, you know, it's good to see him get back and get right in the swing of things. But can't hardly sit here and not talk about Jordan Tolbert's rebounding, which is turning it, turning into almost uh, a, it looks like a video game sometimes when he, the way he's rebounding. And, the guys wouldn't let me. I didn't want to take him out, but I kind of wanted to take him out, and the guys would not let me take him out, uh, hoping he would get a couple more. But 23 rebound night is, I don't care who you're playing or when you're playing or what you're playing. That, that's You don't see many of those. And then to show that two other guys were in double figures rebound. We have been, two things that we are or have been, and I'm pretty sure will continue, uh, what are we, eight games in, I think? We have been an outstanding rebounding team. I mean, just um, maybe as good of numbers as I've seen in all the years that I've coached. And the other thing we are is we are very, very unselfish. The ball is shared. The ball is moved. Um, not only the ball, but just the attitude of the guys on the bench and in timeouts and always talking about, you know, getting someone else in the game and I'll come out of the game and let's get this guy shot and let's get that guy shot. Um, that's when guys get really fun. So their effort is outstanding, can always get better. Their, their camaraderie, their unselfishness is outstanding and um, it's made for a successful start to the season. We still have a lot of improvement left, a lot of room to improve. We're going to need to improve, but so far, they've been uh, they've been a really fun team to coach. What is the status on the Well, neither one practiced all week. Neither one has has practiced since the Michigan game. So that was part of of you know the issue. And then Cedric has the has a fever, um, and that's uh, you know not real timely. But the, those guys, uh, you know, were for tomorrow. You know, I keep telling you guys, uh, hopeful, which is I don't think even an official status. It's my status, hopeful, um, but <laughs> questionable, doubtful. What are that? What are the other ones? You know, um, but but we'll see. I honestly don't know. I I would certainly tell you if I knew. You know, if one or both would be in there tomorrow, um, 
but I just don't know at this point. So it really is like a game time decision, and 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 we could certainly use at least one of them. When you dress only seven, what is your greatest fear? <laughs> and I had a lot. Yeah, the, with without question, foul trouble or injury, particularly early in the game, um, and you know that's. Uh, I, <laughs> It's funny how you know you picture the game. The, the, the plan was to try to play as much man as we could, but I was just so ready to just start going zone, particularly in the first half, just to get us to the second half. This was the plan going in, try to make sure we get to halftime not in foul trouble. And uh, we weren't even close to any foul trouble, so I don't think we played a possession of zone. And then in the second half, I kind of wanted to, but players did not they did not want to want to do that they never they never seemed to want to do that but you have to force them sometimes but um that was it that that was completely it and then you know i've kind of had in my mind the way the michigan game started where in the first possession uh marcus is out so if we had an injury in this game and were in foul trouble those were tremendous fears that uh kept me up late late last night I could promise you that but none of it none of it turned out it was a clean game you know from the fouling standpoint officiating standpoint and uh, it never you know none of those fears but I also think it's the coach's job to think about all the it's really not that hard to prepare if everything's going to go right you know I think part of the coaching staff's job is to try to prepare for a lot of the things that could go wrong and have some kind of plan or at least have it thought through a little bit beforehand. So what goes with that is a lot of worry and stress, like you said, and you hope that it never it never really materializes. But I think it's important that you, you think the game through um, that far each and every night just in case. Is uh, Seti going to be back? Or? Not tomorrow. No, he had a fever. He had a fever, and he's got a, I think, a, one of those respiratory things that's going around. So he's not uh, not in too good of shape. You mentioned the risk of injury and foul trouble. Where did the concern about playing back-to-back -back games on back-to-back -back nights with a short bench rank in your? Yeah, because you can you can we couldn't rest. You know, if you had a bigger bench, you could play less minutes. Um, that that's a big concern for tomorrow. We're, we're looking at several guys in the 30 minute or more mark, um, which would be one thing if we were in a say a conference tournament where our opponent had done the same thing. But that that's not the case. We um, it's almost polar opposites. Hampton, if I'm not mistaken, has not played since December 5th. They went into finals. So one thing they are is fresh. I don't know. Rusty, I hope, is another thing that they are, but they are fresh. And we are not, but we didn't get the rust off of us. So, you know, maybe that'll be an advantage. But at the same time, um, you know, these are these are college young men that are in tremendous shape. And um, we we expect them to bounce back and, you know, competitive athletes. That's what they're going to do. So definitely not an excuse if we don't play well. We can't use it that way, but we are even tonight trying to do some recovery things. We'll do some recovery things in the morning and try to get them feeling as, as good as we possibly can. When you, what do you expect uh, Shane Young to do? Well, he, you know, he he's, uh, could, would be eligible tomorrow, but we're contemplating a red shirt. He's completely involved in that. No final decision has been made yet, but that is uh, – a strong possibility, I will say that. So he may or may not play tomorrow, but it's, you know, there is some momentum towards redshirting. So probably no officially tomorrow. What about it in keeping your team focused in the second half? You know, it's funny. No, it's, it's, I, well, I don't know that I did. I mean, it was, it's hard. I, I, I really feel this. Over the years, and you know, you see in so many different situations, I'm not so sure that a very, very big halftime lead might not be the hardest thing to play with in basketball. 
which is not to say you don't want to have a very, very big halftime lead. You do, but it's really hard to keep that, that competitive edge and that concentration and that single-minded focus of a possession and for the game not to get a little loose. And of course, the psychology changes for the other team because they have nothing to lose, everything to gain, and, and they're trying to come back. And I just, honestly, I've not, I don't know, I don't know how many really good halves I have seen after a team plays a half, first half, like we did. Now, we talked about it and just challenged them and said, hey, I'm just telling you, rarely do you see a team. You have to be a great team to play a great second half like you played the first half. And, and, and we did fine, and it wasn't – I didn't think it was poor by any stretch, but it's just hard. It's just uh, – it's human nature, and uh, it's one of the most difficult things. But if you ask me if we could be lucky enough to have a big halftime lead the, the rest of the season, that would be, that would be just fine. We'll keep trying to do better the second half with a lead.